Let me tell you a story. When I was using FL Studio, I had no creativity, I was never inspired, I had struggles starting songs, struggle finishing songs, but as soon as I changed my DAW and switched to Logic Pro, I instantly felt more creative, produced more and more songs, and I never ran into another creative block ever again. This is how important choosing a DAW can be, so this is why in this video, I'm going to share with you five things to look out for when making your decision. If you are a beginner that recently started, this video will help you make the best choice. And if you already started, but feel like you might have not made the right choice, then this video will help you find a better DAW for you. First of all, if you don't know me, my name is PLV. My mission here in this channel is to help self-taught music producers and artists like you to learn music production at home the fast and easy way. Now, the first thing you need to understand is that there is no best DAW. The best DAW is the one that works for you. Don't listen to anyone that says otherwise. We are all different and our brains work differently. So for example, FL Studio might be the best DAW for someone, but for other people, it might be the worst, like me. So you have to make your own decision, your own choice. In order to do that, the first thing I recommend for you is to try different ones. Many, if not most of them, have free trial versions, so take advantage of it. Just try it out, make a couple songs, see how you like it. If you don't like it, then try another one. If you do, then potentially buy it. Now, before you make a decision, you need to know what is your music production goal. What do you need it for and what do you want to do with it? For example, if you want to be a mixing engineer, then you should look into more of the technical DAWs like Pro Tools or Ableton. But if you mostly want to compose and produce songs, then DAWs like FL Studio and Logic are great. There are many other questions that you need to ask yourself, like what music genre do you want to make? Are you going to mostly record live instruments or play with virtual instruments? Are you more into recording or sound manipulation and editing? Do you want to compose and print music sheets? The more you know about what you want to do and what your goal is, the easier it'll be to make a decision. To give you some example, FL Studio is great for beat making, EDM2, because of the pattern work Workflow. Most of the tutorials online are also using FL Studio, which makes it a great choice if you want a lot of educational resources. Logic Pro is great for recording vocals or instruments, the composition and production process. It has the simplest workflow and interface. It is great for any music genre, not just EDM, and you can even print music sheets if you are into that. Ableton Live, on the other hand, is going to be great for fast processing chains and live performing loops. Finally, Pro Tools is great for more editing and mixing, and is great if you want to record multiple live audio tracks, but it doesn't have a lot of stock plugins. Additionally, you cannot use third-party plugins VSTs except in the AAX format, which seriously limits your options. They all pretty much do the same in the end, but depending on your specific goal, you might already have a better idea of what is a better fit for you. Another important part, as per my experience, is to choose the one that you understand the most and that makes the most sense for you, the one that you feel the most comfortable with. This is where trying a few different ones or watching tutorials using different DAWs might help you make that decision. For me, FL Studio absolutely never made sense. Their pattern workflow just doesn't work with my brain. So for me, Logic Pro made more sense because its workflow, its interface, I understand it really well. For others, FL Studio is awesome because it makes sense for them. So just choose the one that makes sense for you in terms of the workflow so that you can focus on the creative process. Which makes me think, are you still using the same DAW that you started on or did you switch along the way? Let me know in the comments, I'm really curious to see. Also, if you are enjoying this video and think it is valuable for you, then don't hesitate to leave a little like over here. It'll really help to spread the knowledge to more producers. Next up, the fourth thing to keep in mind when looking for a DAW is your budget. Obviously, there are many free DAWs that you can use like GarageBand, Studio One, BandLab. But if you are looking to invest in one, the price can quickly go up. For example, Pro Tools, Ableton and FL Studio are definitely on the higher end with Ableton starting at around $129, going up to $969. Yikes! But Pro Tools is even $389 for just a one-year subscription. On the side of FL Studio, it starts at $129 and goes up to $660. As you can see, both Ableton and FL Studio have different tiers, different versions that give you access to different features, but it is personally not my favorite. Other DAWs like Logic ends up being one of the cheapest as you can access all features for $250. Reaper is actually the cheapest option at just $60 with the discounted price that you can get as long as you don't make more than $20,000 in revenue from your music, which makes it a great option if you are on a budget. Another thing to keep in mind is the compatibility with your operating system. Logic Pro and GarageBand are only available on Mac OS, whereas Cakewalk is only available on Windows. Then you can also check for DAWs that are compatible with phone or tablet if you are not sure if you want to invest in a DAW yet. One thing I will say though is that you should not hesitate to change DAW if you feel like the one you're using might not work 
work for you. Don't give yourself more trouble than it already is to learn music production. Just make it easy for you to keep going with this long journey. As I was saying, I am way faster, more creative and have a better workflow since I've been using Logic Pro, which is what I explained in this video. If you are curious to know as to why I did the switch, what wasn't working for me on FL and what did work for me on Logic, then you can watch this video next. But in the meantime, keep learning and I'll see you in the next one.